Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jay Mehta here from Shri IVF Clinic, Mumbai. In today's video, we are going to try and understand the concept of non-obstructive azoospermia and its possible treatment options. Remember, azoospermia, as we have discussed, is one of the common causes of male infertility and is predominantly diagnosed by having at least two semen reports done at least four to six weeks apart, both of which demonstrating zero sperm count or nil sperm count. Out of all causes of azoospermia, the more common one is non-obstructive and the less common one is obstructive. Today we'll be focusing on non-obstructive azoospermia. Remember, it's a very vast topic requiring tremendous expertise and I'm somehow going to try and compress the entire knowledge in approximately six to seven minutes. In order to understand non-obstructive azoospermia more vibrantly, we need to understand the basics of the reproductive anatomy of the male. As we all know, males have two testes, the right one and the left one. The testes is then connected through a pipeline called as the vas deferens, where the produced sperms, that means the testes, which is the manufacturing unit, which is producing the sperms are stored and carried to the seminal vesicles. Seminal vesicles is sort of a warehouse where the sperms are kept, nourished, additional nutrition is given and then these sperms are ejaculated during intercourse through the penis which comes out as the seminal fluid. In order to understand non-obstruction, remember the word itself is very simple. There is no obstruction. That means the male reproductive tract is predominantly going to be normal, but still there is going to be azoospermia. This predominantly means that there is a problem in the manufacturing unit itself and the manufacturing unit is the testis. So it means that there is some problem in the testis which is causing reduction of sperm production. So the common question in your mind is going to be what are the causative factors which causes these testes to reduce their sperm production? Remember, it could be congenital. That means the testis hasn't come down enough, which is called as cryptorchidism or undescended testes. Apart from that, it could be an injury to the testis. You know, while playing cricket, somebody had an accident, somebody fell down from a bike and it injured the testis during childhood. It could be viral infections of childhood, which causes these testes to go dysfunctional, especially mums, especially unknown viral infections. It's very common. Apart from this, there could be endocrinological causes, which are predominantly related to the brain and related to the secretion of hormones. And finally, it could be any gonadotoxic therapies. By the word gonadotoxic, I mean any chemotherapy, any radiation therapy which has been taken for cancer affecting any part of the body can also lead to non-obstructive azoospermia. As you understand, the manufacturing is defective. That means the testis itself is having some defect in production of sperms. This means the hormonal reports are going to be very variable. It's very common to have elevated levels of hormone FSH. Also, mildly elevated levels of hormone estradiol and low to normal levels of hormone testosterone. Apart from this, your doctor will also recommend you to get something called as a karyotyping done, which predominantly rules out a genetic cause of causing non-obstruction. On examination, you are going to be surprised like how we discussed in obstructive azoospermia, the testis is going to be normal. In non-obstructive, because the testis is the problem, the testis could be slightly smaller in size. It could be slightly softer in consistency and it could be slightly variable in location. So the question which you're going to have is, when the manufacturing itself is defective, 
how can I have my own sperms when I am having non-obstructive azoospermia? Remember, in the male testis, God has gifted the testis into multifunctional departments. That means the testis is divided into various lobules. And inside these lobules, there are various seminiferous tubules. These tubules are independent cylinders. They are responsible for sperm production independently. That means even though the testis is widely defective, there could be some areas inside the testis which are still producing healthy sperms and that is what we take advantage of while doing the process or surgery of micro dissection. Now micro dissection is a highly specialized surgical technique. We have put up multiple videos on that. It's a long procedure which takes approximately two and a half hours in order to screen, examine and open up a testis. This testis is then examined under a microscope to identify healthy seminiferous tubules from which viable sperms can be obtained and these sperms can be used for the procedure of ICSI in order to create healthy embryos. Very importantly, a male patient must remember that the average sperm retrieval rate varies between 55 to 70 percent. That means if I look at 100 patients of non-obstructive azoospermia, in approximately 55 to 70 percent of patients on a broad average, we will be able to retrieve sperms. The other patients, despite having normal hormonal parameters, we might not get sperms. And that is a very important take-home point. So prior to undergoing micro dissection, you must have a very good clinical and a hormonal examination from your consultant doctor regarding the expected success of this procedure. But due to microtesa, it's very fortunately possible to allow and give these male patients with non-obstructive azoospermia a very viable chance of having a child with their own sperms. This is a very vast topic. We have some videos of the procedure on our channel. Should there be more questions, please put it on our comments box. Me or one of my team members will try to respond to it because we understand that there could be a lot of questions and anxiety, especially in males with non-obstructive azoospermia. Thank you so much.